What's up, family? It is Therapy Thursday. Uh, My name is Isaac Curry. For those who this is your first time, if this is your first time in the comment section, let us know this is your first time uh, fellowshipping with us. Come on, family, friends in the comment section. Let's encourage those whose first time it is today attending our Therapy Thursday. Y'all, I'm so excited to be here again. I'm so excited for this season of Therapy Thursday and what God is doing doing, has been doing, and what is coming down the pipeline. Yo, I'm excited. I praise the Lord for this moment. Are y'all ready for today's session? Let us know where you're streaming from across the world. We are grateful to have you to be a part of this Therapy Thursday. Um, Yo, how about my brother uh, who came last week? We're so grateful for him and how he's in addition to our team. We're grateful for um, JF, my brother Flowers. We're so thankful for what God is doing and giving us an opportunity to pour into your lives. And uh, we do not take it for granted. I'm excited. Today is short and sweet, but it's necessary, right? Um, I'm going to pray with you. And then we're going to dive into our session for today. But I just want to express uh, my gratefulness from my family. Uh, Pastor Elena uh, sends her regards. Listen, um, we're excited. We're excited about today. Uh, We're excited about how God wants to speak to us. Um, Some of us are unmarried. Some of us are preparing to be married. Some of us are in serious relationships. Others are um, married and have been. Some are newly married. Some are widowed. Some are are not looking uh, for marriage. We just want to be better. Um, Today's um, message, today's session will help to shape how we do relationships how we encounter our relationships, becoming more self-reflective, right? Um, whether it is a romantic relationship or how it, how you interact with uh, even family and peers, but specifically to our married couples, those who are dating, those who are on the dating scene, seriously dating, hoping to be married, but yet you're still unmarried right now and you want to explore how to be better, how to communicate better, how to show up better. Today, um, I want to help you. Today's Therapy Thursday message, or session rather, uh, is centered around the subject, why isn't my relationship working? Ah, There it is, there it is, there it is. Why isn't my relationship working? Can someone put that in the comment section? Why isn't my relationship working. Uh, With wisdom, though, you can take that title and you can help to shape this session to fit your circumstance. Again, maybe you're not dating. Maybe you're not married. uh, Maybe um, you have co-workers. Maybe you have family close by and friends. I believe you can still use the ingredients within this message, this Therapy Thursday session to help how you relate. Can we do that? Let me pray with you. God, our Father, we are grateful for one more opportunity. I stand before you saying thank you that you can use me as a vessel. Speak through me today that every person who is under the sound of my voice, every person who catches this live on a replay, that they are impacted in some way. God, take the fragments of what I have and God feed the masses. I'm not just talking to them, but God, I'm talking to my own self. I speak through my own personal experiences. God, I pray that this time together is fruitful, that it is helpful, and that it brings you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people, Together, said amen, 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 amen. Why isn't my relationship working? Hmm. Well, let's first find 
biblical foundation. Um, I do like Romans 15 and 5. I do love Ephesians chapter 5. And both speak about the necessity of harmony. Harmony as Christ followers, harmony in our relationships, harmony in our homes, harmony in our marriages. And and if we're going to achieve, experience, embrace harmony, there are some things that we might want to be cognizant of that can help us to show up better in our own lives, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and show up better uh in other people's lives as we engage them, right? Um, And one thing I want to make sure that we understand that many times we will settle for um, dishonest harmony and, and we'll settle for dishonest harmony instead of honest conflict. Right. So when we talk about harmony or harmony in Romans 15 and five, that is that is we have to work to achieve harmony. It's not something that happens easy and conflict is necessary. And we're going to talk about a few things as into what I believe talking with the Lord and experiences um, counseling and coaching. There are three things that I believe we're going to touch on as into what helps encourage relational breakdown. If you have ever prayed this prayer, if you've ever wondered, man, what is wrong in my relationship? Man, we can't get right. Well, I, I, I want to give up. I, I'm, I'm tired. I want to help you because I believe there's one of three things, if not all three things, that perhaps is showing up in your in your relationship, in your marriage, in your friendship, in your family. Why isn't this relationship working? Romans 15 and 5 says, May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you to live in complete harmony with one another, as is fitting for followers of Jesus Christ. How do we live in harmony or what causes disunity or or the lack of harmony? What causes relational breakdown that many of us are experiencing? I want to talk about that today. Hmm. God, speak to us. There are three things. There are three things. One, inattentional blindness. Two, mutual inconsideration, and three, conflict mismanagement. I just gave, I just gave you the session, but I, I got to dive into it in order to help it make sense and how it could be showing up in your life, how it could be showing up in your personal life, how it could be showing up in your relationship, how it could be showing up in your marriage, how it is showing up on your job or even with your family. Inattentional blindness, not only inattentional blindness, but it's mutual inconsideration and conflict mismanagement. I want to dive. Can, can you lean in? Let, let, let's, let's lean in. Let's lean in. I want to talk about um, inattentional blindness. Do me a favor. How about this? Do me this favor. Do me this favor. I'm going to give you one assignment and I want you to focus and just complete the assignment. So I'm about to show you this very, very brief video that I borrowed from from YouTube. And what I want you to do is I want you to pay close attention to the group of people wearing white. And I want to see if you're able to determine how many times they pass the ball. Can you and and not everybody's going to be able to determine how many times they pass the ball. But I want you to pay close attention. Can you do that? And then as soon as they finish, I want you to put the number in the comment section. How many times the people in white, they pass the ball. As soon as you get that number, put it in the comment section. Here we go. How many 
many times did they pass the ball? In the comment section, you should say about 13. Hmm. Somebody said 11, somebody said 12, somebody said 14. Hmm. Now, I know this is not new for a lot of you, but for a few of us, we don't see the point. The point is this. Although you got that right, did you see did you pay attention? Did you notice the moonwalking gorilla? Some of us were so focused on one thing that we missed the details that were right in our face. Mm. Some of us were so focused on the people in white trying to get that number right that you missed the details of something right in your face. That is an intentional blindness without me even having to define it. It is when you become so focused on one thing that you can't see anything else, even if it's right in front of you. And many times in our personal lives, our professional lives, our relational lives, we struggle with this very thing. And that is the cause of greater conflict. That is the cause of relational breakdown. That is the cause of dissension. But let's just focus on relational breakdown because inattentional blindness can impact your relationship with your children. It can impact your relationships on your job with coworkers. It can impact every aspect of your life. But I just want to focus Focus on how we show up in our relationships, how we show up in our relation in our marriages, and how we show up with people that we say we love. Inattentional blindness is just like that exercise. You're so focused on one thing, you're so focused on getting this thing right that you can't see anything else. You're so focused on your emotions, you're so focused on your perspective, on your opinion, that you don't even recognize how you showed up and how you're showing up in this marriage is hurting the person next to you. Ah, mm, mm. Inattentional blindness is this phenomena that oftentimes we become so focused on one thing that we absolutely become blind to all other things. For uh, I, Let me help you this way. Have you ever, those of us who wear glasses, have you ever misplaced your glasses and then you come to realize that your glasses are either on your head or they're like, on your shirt or there's somewhere on your person or have you ever had keys ever all of us all of us have run around the house or run around our place of business looking for our keys and they're right in your hands and oftentimes it's because you're so busy you're so consumed with many things or you're focused on other things that the thing that is important you don't even recognize is right in your face. One of the things that is like cancer in your relationships, one of the things that is like cancer, I'm giving, we're giving couples therapy. We're giving therapy to those who are looking to be in a relationship, those who are, who are, who are already married. One of the things that's just like poison is that you gotta be right and that you only see your offense not realizing that perhaps you are so focused on your offense that you're causing a trail of flames on the way to proving your point. Sometimes we can become so focused on ourselves, so focused on getting something right, on you can be right and still be wrong. You can, yes, you're right that you, you're absolutely right that that is how something happened, but you don't even recognize that everything else in your presence, everything else in front of you is wrong. Inattentional blindness is like cancer. 
because what it does is it dismisses the other person it it become you become callous you be you, you don't recognize the emotions that someone is displaying you don't even recognize their hurt you can't even have empathy because you're focused on something else you're showing up to this relationship, you're showing up to this conversation, and what is causing greater conflict is the fact that you don't recognize all of the details that are apparent in your present. You're fighting, you're trying to get your point across, you want to be heard, you want to be heard, but hadn't taken the time to listen to pay attention to all of the telltale songs. And sometimes the relationship has broken down, but it's like your vehicle that keeps having the, the check engine sign come on, but because the vehicle keeps cranking up and it keeps cranking up and it keeps getting you to the destination, you just overlook the sign that says check engine. Your engine is low, person. You need to, hey, your, your fuel, your fuel is low. Your tire, are, you know, some of us, you know that as long as the tires don't get too, too low, you just won't get, put air in it or, or you might have a slow leak and you just keep overlooking it. But that check engine light keeps coming on. And you keep on driving it because it turns on and we do relationships like that. And, and inattentional blindness is that, you know, you keep overlooking the check engine in your relationship, the check engine in your personal life, your heart posture, even in your marriage. And you wonder why one day something doesn't turn on. The relationship is over. The marriage is over. There's no returning. There's no coming back because you had to focus on the one thing that you were not paying attention. You wanted to get to the destination, but you still didn't pay attention to the check engine light. One of the things that causes relational breakdown, one of the reasons that your relationship could not be working is because you, You're focused on one thing. So, so what do we do? What do, do what do we do? How 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 do we how do we handle this? It could be good, or it might be a good exercise for you to then ask clarifying questions, to slow down first, to start asking clarifying questions, to ask God for the help for you to close your mouth and hold your tongue and to help your body language, help you to be empathetic, help you to listen before speaking. As much as you feel wronged, as much as you feel like your voice isn't heard, God is the one who vindicates you, not you. That's on your job, that's in your relationships, that's in your family. If you can learn how to give the control to God and say, God, I'm giving this to you because I cannot fix it on my own. How do you handle if you've been being if you've been blind in your relationship or in any relationship? Well, it might mean that you need to slow down because the times where when 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 I lose my glasses or I lose my my keys or I don't see the symptoms or the signs of something is sick in my life it's because I'm moving too much I have too many things occupying my brain and I don't have a priority and if my priority is showing up in this marriage. If my priority is showing up on this job, the best person that I can be, if my priority is to show up in this family better than I ever had, then I need to slow down and make it a priority. I I need to, and I need to ask clarifying questions if I see that there is emotion, if there is great anger or if there is dismissive or someone has resigned, if she has resigned, if he has resigned, I, I want to now, before we get to resignation, I want to ask, I see, I recognize that you're upset. Can you help me to understand why? That takes Holy Ghost power. This is therapy Thursday. This is just this is therapy. This we need the we need Jesus and therapy. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us and we need therapy to help us with discipline. 
And so you got to ask God, God, help me to hold my tongue. God, give me eyesight so that I can see the other person as you see them, not as I want to see them. And then when you begin to ask clarifying questions and you begin to slow down, then it becomes less likely that you overlook the check engine sign in your relationship. Or you don't overlook the details right in front of you so that next time. And for those of you, I didn't see a gorilla. Go back to the replay when the replay is up and go and look and watch the gorilla. But next time you might be a little bit more conscious that, yes, I want to get this right, but I don't want to get this right by just overlooking everything else that's in front of me. Hmm. We need the Holy Ghost. The second reason, second reason, second reason. If the first reason that my relationship is not working is because of inattentional blindness, it is my tendency to focus on one thing so much that I overlook the other important details right in front of me and how that that impacts my home, my family, my profession, my marriage, my relationship. And the second one is mutual inconsideration. What is mutual inconsideration? Mutual inconsideration is usually when one or two people lack kindness. Somebody type, type kindness, kindness, thoughtfulness, and empathy for the other person. Mutual in consideration, there's a such thing as mutual consideration when two people uh, out serve one another, when two people work very hard to find ways that they can be considerate and over considerate for the other person. But mutual in consideration is when one or both parties, really both parties, they lack kindness, thoughtfulness and empathy for the other person. And this usually shows up as disrespect. It usually shows up as dismissiveness. It usually shows up as a lack of concern. But the reason that it shows up as disrespect, the reason that it shows up as dismissing my emotions, dismissing my offense, dismissing how I feel is because of familiarity and entitlement. You get that? Sometimes in our relationships, sometimes in our family, we get so used to how other people show up that we feel entitled and we become familiar. And then as we become familiar, you no longer honor things the way that you need to honor things. And it, I, if you need scripture that teaches us how to honor things, we can just look at Ephesians chapter five. If we were just talking about um, marriage, but even when you look at Ephesians chapter five, it's talking about unity in the entire home. It's talking about harmony in your family. And that is why our families are under attack. Our marriages are under attack. But matter of fact, our marriages are under attack or they're under ignorance, or they're just underperforming. And one of the things that we have to understand is when you become so familiar with your spouse, when you become so familiar with the woman that you're dating or the man that you're dating, or when you become so familiar how people show up, you no longer honor them the way that you need to honor them. Then you no longer consider them the way that you need to consider them. You don't have empathy for them. And then you begin to disrespect them. Hmm. Mutual in consideration is when entitlement and familiarity override your desire to honor, respect, and show thoughtfulness to the people and the person that you're with, the people that you're surrounding, that you're in a group with, or the person that you're married to, the person that you're dating. Uh, let me say it this way. When one or both people can no longer revere, respect the other person, no longer becomes a student of the other person because of entitlement, because I feel I deserve this. 
you begin to place poison in your relationships. I like Ephesians chapter 5. It says in verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. You submit to one another because not because you revere one another it's because you revere Christ first. You submit to one another if we're just talking about marriage and we're not just talking about marriage, but we are also talking about marriage. You submit to one another because you revere Christ. And then it says, um, wives, submit to your own husbands as you do the Lord. <laughs> we usually miss that because we think the assignment and the task is to submit to your husbands. When the whole scripture says submit to the husbands as you submit to God. And for most of us, it's hard to submit to God, submit to our husbands, our spouses, because you're not also submitted to the Lord. But then it says, um, husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church. You cannot love your wife if you're not also adopting the heart of Christ. I'm just talking about mutual, the call to mutual consideration right and then it says um what's that last verse it says so I, so again i say each man must love his wife as he loves himself and his wife must respect and the wife must respect her husband we have a call not just for marriage even if we look at romans chapter 15 we have a call to achieve harmony we have a call to honor respect the people that we say i do to we have a call to show love and consideration to the people with whom we're in a covenant with, right? But the reason that we have relational breakdown is because we're no longer honoring that covenant. We're no longer on honoring that call, rather. So how do we flip the script? One of the things you can do is take a step back Look at the person who you're dating. Look at the person who you're in covenant with. Look at your spouse and begin to take an assessment of what your what your person needs. What do they need from you? I, see, you can't do this outside of the power of the Holy Ghost, because the first thing you're thinking about is yourself. Mutual consideration means that it is mutual. So you got to trust God that the other person will hear from God and the other person would will take up their responsibility. But you will honor your responsibility and you take a step back and you ask yourself, what does my person need from me? And then you begin to show these acts of consideration for them as much as you can. You can do it for a period of three days. You can do it for a period of seven days. Just, just try it. What this is called is getting back to the basics. You got to get back to the basics. And the basics are, I want to honor you. Ah, I can't hold counts of and keeping the ledger of all the wrongs you did and every time you offended me and every time you didn't show up. You know what? I'm giving that to the Lord. God forgave me. I'm God showed grace to me and I'm going to show grace to my spouse. So then what you do is taking a step back, assessing your your person and what they need. It will even be good if you ask them. But you should know because you are a student. And let's say for those who are unmarried, not looking to get married. You're talking about the dissension, the unity that you desire in your home. Maybe you live with family members. Maybe you have roommates. Maybe there is dissension on your job. Whatever the case is, take a step back. How can I serve the other person? How can I serve? How can I show up better? What do they need from me? What does my child need from me? What does my parent need from me? What does my sibling need from me? What does my friend need from me? But mutual in consideration is the reason that many of us are experiencing relational breakdown. Let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. So it's inattentional blindness, right? You're focusing on one thing so much 
that you're missing the beauty of the person that you're with. Or it's mutual inconsideration that you've become so familiar with the person you're with that you no longer honor them the way that you've been called to honor them. You're entitled. They're too familiar. You need God to break down that wall for you. Or it's conflict mismanagement. Somebody type conflict mismanagement, conflict mismanagement, conflict mismanagement, conflict mismanagement. You either avoid conflict, you either dismiss the conflict, or you magnify it. You either avoid conflict, you dismiss it, ah, or you put a magnifying glass and, and the small things you magnify. The way we mismanage conflict, the way we show up with conflict many times is how you were taught to handle conflict growing up. But how you handle conflict in your relational life, in your marriage, uh, in your home, with your family, on your job will determine the longevity of it or the lack thereof. Hmm. The way that you show up or the way that you approach conflict is what creates an atmosphere of unity or disunity. Because you can have conflict and still have harmony. Did you hear that? You can have conflict and still have harmony. You can have conflict and still be unified. The presence of conflict does not mean the presence of disunity. But how you show up in your relational life, how you show up in your marriage, how you handle conflict, how you view conflict, how you treat conflict, trying to avoid conflict is not avoiding conflict. That's setting your relationship up for demise. For example, showing up to conflict, criticizing someone, Showing up to your conflict with blame. Showing up with conflict with accusation. Criticizing blame accusation. That's the three-headed monster. Criticizing someone. Blaming someone else. Or accusing them of whatever is going on will always create an atmosphere of defensiveness. You wonder why somebody is defensive? It could be, yes, they just are always defensive or you're always accusing. You're always blaming. The atmosphere is never right for a man to open up. That's why he doesn't open up, because if he opened up last time he opened up, it was mayhem. He had to apologize for telling you the truth, although you asked him to tell you the truth or you know, we're conflict and you can never be right because he's he, he's going to shut you down. Every time you say something, he's going to shut you down. He's going to shut you down. He's going to shut you down. And so there's just you can't you can never talk. Conflict mismanagement is dangerous. But you showing up to conflict with accusation, with blame, with criticism will never produce meaningful discussion. So the way that you approach your relational conflict, the way that you approach any conflict is by first creating an atmosphere where anybody would want to show up and talk. Hey, I'd love for us to just have a conversation um, and I want to listen and hear your heart you know, as into maybe why you feel the way that you feel. How can, can you try to let the other person, even though you feel like you get all the ammunition, all the right, you you know the other person is wrong as two left shoes. Can you create a space where you say, hey, let me know, let me know like what's on your heart. Um, I want to I want to listen to you without interrupting you. The only way that that can happen, though, man, you got to have a relationship with the Lord. Ah, 
You personally have to have the type of relationship with the Lord where you say, God, I need you to intervene because if you don't help me, ain't no help to be had. And so what happens is instead of blaming, instead of criticizing, because many times some of us, we come with that because it's easier to criticize than to look at ourselves. It's easy to blame than it is to be accountable. It's easy to accuse. I'm right. I'm right. You can be right and still wrong. And so how you deal with conflict, just because that's how you were taught to deal with conflict, doesn't mean that's the right way to deal with conflict. And so creating the atmosphere where you would, but not just you, others would actually want to talk and then you actually allowing them to talk. Hearing what they're saying. And sometimes it's probably advantageous that you don't reply. You just let it sit. You let that simmer and you reconvene another time so that now you can share your perspective. Because sometimes we just need to learn to listen. Man, somebody need to type, I need to learn to listen. Somebody type, I need to listen. I need to listen. I need to listen better. You have to, for those of us who mismanage conflict, you have to be honest about that. I'm not the greatest at conflict. You got to take a step back and you got to reframe how you view conflict. Conflict is necessary for growth. Conflict is necessary for trust. Like, can I trust you to handle my mistakes? Can I trust you to handle um, pressure? Can I trust you to handle when I'm not at my best? Can I trust you to handle conflict well? Can I trust you not to judge me? Can I trust you to walk with me and help me to see a newer perspective without condemning me in the process? Inattentional blindness can ruin your life, your relationship, your marriage. Mutual inconsideration, or shall I just say inconsideration, being inconsiderate. You maybe you come from a context where the light was always on you. Maybe you're the only child. Maybe you're just accustomed to getting the things that you desire. That can sometimes not help you and can not bode well in relationships, in marriages, because now you're called to serve the other person, to die to your own self. And it's hard to do that if you've never done it before. That's why in our, even in our singleness, we got to learn self-control. We got to learn how to die to ourselves. We got to learn how not to be selfish because when God uh, leads us into a new season, we want to already execute what we've been practicing. Hello. Why isn't my relationship working? Inattentional blindness, mutual inconsideration, or conflict mismanagement. And each of these things, you can flip the script, you can turn around, you can do better. But you cannot just do better with discipline. You got to do better because you submit again to the Lord. And you ask God to check your heart and to remove the things in your heart that are keeping you from being able to view the person or the people in your home, in your family, in your marriage, the person in your marriage, or even on your job. Help me to see them the way that you see them. And once as God, you give God permission to move in your heart, then you can show up differently. May God bless you. God, we thank you for this simple, yet necessary word. Now, God, we pray that you help us to put it into practice. That, God, you speak to our personal lives, to our hearts. And if our hearts are hard anywhere, make it tender, make it soft. Restore marriages today. And those of us who have never seen a healthy marriage, God, give us a healthy image of what healthy marriage looks like. Teach us how to thrive in our singleness. Teach us how to show up better in our dating relationships. Teach us how to honor our spouses who we said I do to God. We thank you for the opportunity to work toward harmony.
Holy Spirit, we need you to guide us. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. I'll see you very soon. Peace.